Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today we are looking at Zoroark Lucario. It's a very anticipated archetype since the release of Lucario and it didn't disappoint. It got top 4 in Portland and plenty other top 32 placements for Lucario in different builds as well. So definitely a powerful card. I think the best way to play it is alongside our good friend Zoroark. No surprises there. Uh, but yeah... Uh, let's jump into the list and talk about the decisions. So, first of all, a 4-4 line of good old Zoroark GX. Trade is absolutely absurd, we all know that. 210 HP is nice, right is beating, hopefully hitting 120 for a DCE, really good stuff. Weakness to fighting, sort of covered by the Psychic text that we're playing. Resistance to Psychic, a little bit more relevant now that Espeon is creeping back into the format. Then we have a 3-2 line of Lucario GX. Quick notes on the Riolu. Has 70 hit points, which is a big bonus for you, so you can freely attach energy turn 1, not worrying about energy drive knocking it out on the bench, uh, or even in the active. And he has two pretty decent attacks as well. Jab for just 10 seems pretty harmless, but when you put a strong energy on, you're now hitting 30, and that's times 2 weakness for Zeruas as well. So that can do good chunks and take knockouts in the early turns if you really need to pressurize the opponent. Even with like a choice band, you can do two hit KOs on Zoroark sometimes, or you can set up a two hit KO for your other attackers later down the line with things like choice bands. So really do bear my jab in mind. It's not a bad attack at all. And then you even have detect. You flip a coin of heads, prevent all effects, including damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. So it can be a Hail Mary option if you need to stay or just survive for a turn. He can be pretty nice for you. And if you're going second, especially against things like Zoroark decks, you can... Try and force them to Guzma around you, stuff like that. So, Detect, not a bad option at all. Pretty good card, uh, for a basic anyway. On to the Lucario GX. It, again, has 210 hit points. It's a stage 1, and it's a glorious fighting type. That's one of the main reasons why we're going to play this deck. Similar approach to the Zoroark Lycanroc variant, where you're pairing one of the best cards in the game with a card that can beat mirror matches, because you are a fighting type. So... Lucario, amazing at dealing with Zoroarks. As we all know, this Aura Strike for one Fighting Energy does a 30 base damage. If this Pokemon evolved from Riolu during this turn, it does 90 more damage. So, very similar to a Glycopod GX's first impression attack. For one energy, you're both doing 120. But 120 is not the final story for Lucario, because he's a Fighting type. We get Strong Energy, which bumps us up to 140, and Choice Band, which bumps us up to 170. So, not only is he amazing at dealing with Zoroarks, he's also a fantastic uh, Pokemon for dealing with Tapu Lele GX as well. So really, really nice one hit KO machine for just one energy. Just really, really crazy good, to be honest. It's very, very aggressive, similar to something like a Glycopod using its own GX attack, but requires way less setup. It can be brought out of nowhere so often. You can just have a Riolu chilling on your bench. N next turn, with all this trading, you can go for like, a Guzma play, get an energy, get a uh, strong energy. Oh, sorry, get a choice band, and then you're dealing with the Lele for the last two prizes. It's always live, and that's just really, really powerful. That's not all, though. He has two other attacks. Cantankerous Beatdown, the GX attack, for two colorless. Does 30 times the number of damage counters on this Pokemon, so it reads exactly the same as Mad Bull GX from the Tauros, but we have 30 more hit points now, and that's really good for you, because, again, it's just harder for things to get around this. It's harder for things to one-hit KO you. And that means oftentimes the Lucario has to be ignored. He has to be le left alone, really. They have to Guzma around him or they have to pass uh, without actually attacking into him. And that's really good for you. Just having this threatening option is fantastic. Even damaging things like Riolu, splash damage or spread damage, uh, you can punish that by attaching a DCE and going with the Lucario that way as well. So again, Riolu is just chilling on the bench. They can be threatening, even if you're trying to damage them. They're, you know, you have to be careful of that as well, so... Really, really good GX attack, and oftentimes can allow Lucario to take four prize turns, or at least slow your opponent down a lot and force them to not attack you for a turn, or suffer the consequences, basically. Then you also have Cyclone Kick. If people are going to ignore the Lucario, why not stack up a bunch of energies onto him and make sure that he can get one hits anyway? Cyclone Kick just does a flat 130 for two fighting and a colorless. It's actually pretty fine. Again, you have to bear in mind we have Strongs and we have Choice Bands, so this is another one hit KO attack more often than not. Really, really crazy, powerful, amazing, amazing card. The only downsides, it has a two retreat cost, which makes it a little bit awkward when you're trying to do just one energy attacking. So you're a little bit reliant on like Floatstone and Acerola. And the biggest downside is that psychic weakness. As we know, 
Um, the Espeon Garb deck was, what, one in Portland, so that's raising in popularity again. Trash Lunch in general is being splashed into different things. And a lot of people are playing Psychic Text. They already were playing Psychic Text just for Buzzwall. So we're seeing things like Oricorios, Mewtwo's, and most importantly, Mew EXs, because they get one hit KOs on you, and that's a little bit scary. So um, do bear that in mind. Psychic Weakness is awkward, but we have our own Psychic stuff in here to deal with the stuff trying to deal with Lucario, and also deal with our own Lucarios uh, and Buzzwalls if the opponent's playing them. So yeah, let's move on to our Psychic Text. We are going to play one Mew EX, fantastic at dealing with Buzzwalls, opposing Lucarios, and can deal with other psychic threats that the opponent's playing, because a lot of the time, psychic stuff is also weak to psychic, so you can uh, copy some good attacks, uh, just copy the writer's beating more often than not, and uh, respond on things like Lucario in mirror match situations, and Buzzworlds as well. Further support for your Buzzworld, and as another way to deal with things like Mew EX, the Mewtwo is also fantastic for you. We're playing three choice bands in here, so it's fairly easy to get the combo to deal with, Things like Buzzwell and Mew yeah, in one hit, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, so more defense against the fighting stuff, which I think is pretty reasonable because, uh, you know, we are a Zoroark deck after all, and Psychic's uh, picking up in play. From there, we're playing one copy of Tapu Koko. Again, it's a similar shell to Zoropod. The free retreat pivot is going to be really nice for you, and Flying Flip is another way to get into range uh, with your Lucario, which is really cool. Um, you can get things like one 90 hit point Pokemon into range, uh, if you're up against things like Turtonators and Volcanians and stuff like that. Um, you can also do it for things like Dustmane Necrozmas, even things like Tapu Bulu. So one Flying Flip sets all of this in range with the combination of Strong and Choice Band. We are playing Kakui as well to try and get there in different spots, but uh, the Coco Flip is also going to be just a really nice tempo thing that we can do. And uh, we can always uh, try and go for this in the early turns as well, so that's really nice. From there, we're just playing three Tapu Leles. We all know why this is in here. Wonder Tag's fantastic, as is Energy Drive. So, yeah, just doesn't really need much explaining. On to the items. We're going to play one Rescue Stretcher. Because lots of Zorak decks are being played right now, and the majority of them are all playing Parallels, I think Stretcher is becoming more and more mandatory to help recover your Pokemon in those situations so you don't run out of resources. Normally, we don't care too much about our bench size. Well, we don't need to worry about it for... Right is beating if it's a Zoroark mirror because we can go heavy on the Lucario counts. But if they are going to hit us with like Parallel and deal with a Riolu in the same turn, it's going to be nice to try and recycle as many of these pieces as possible. It's also an extra out to find your Lucario GX in the first place because we need to activate that in the late game to usually take our last two prizes. And uh, you can't just evolve into a Lucario and chill like you could with a Glycopod. Uh, you actually need to do it all on the same turn, which makes him a little bit more awkward than Glycopod, but... I think the payoff is definitely worth it. So, yeah, one rescue stretcher, really good for mirror matches. And in general, it can get back, like, the psychic techs if it's an important matchup. So do bear that in mind. Uh, three copies of Field Blower. I mentioned the rise of Garbodor, or the return of Garbodor, I should say. So we're taking precautions. We're going to play three Field Blower to try and counteract that. And I also mentioned how many Zoroark decks are playing parallel in high counts. And again, Field Blower is going to be a great defense for that to open up your board once again so that you can uh, benefit from it and have access to your board. It's going to be important. I'm going to play a couple copies of Evo Soda. Great for evolving into your Zoroarks and getting the whole engine rolling. And also going to be good for finding your Lucarios, of course. So we can do his damage buff with Aura Strike. From there, four copies of uh, Ultra Ball and Puzzle. Not too much discussion needed there. One copy of our own Parallel City. Again, going to be great for opposing Zoroark decks. Also going to be good just in general for limiting bench sizes and hurting outs. At the same time, the reduction of damage can help out against the likes of uh, these Kiawe decks and Bulus and even Greninja to a, a small extent. Although Bulus, are, oh sorry, Greninja is a pretty hard matchup. Um, oftentimes we are reliant on uh, Coco spreading some stuff, getting them damaged enough so that Aura Strike can take one hits and try and bounce him. But it's not going to be a good matchup for you. Uh, on to the uh, supporters. We're playing that one Kakui. As I mentioned with the Coco, the same applies here really with Kakui to get one hit KOs. Also, if Lucario is being ignored, you can still do decent chunks with Aura Strike on its own, just with the 30 base being buffed by the likes of Choice Band Strong and Kakui. It's going to be nice with two hit KOs, so you can just chill in the active with Lucario and just keep punching him in the face. Absolutely fine. One copy of Mallow going to be nice for getting our combo pieces going, as is often the case in Zorark variants. 
A couple of two of supporters, Acerola, great again for just bouncing your Lucarios or anything you're trying to um, use. Also good for your Zoroark, of course. So whenever you can tank hits, Acerola can deny those easy prizes. Then we're going to play two copies of Cynthia, some nice shuffle draw alongside three copies of N for some more shuffle draw and also to hopefully disrupt the opponent in the late game and we can trade our way out of a low hand size so that's always fine in theory. Three copies of Bridget to get our dudes going. I would really really like four but I'm instead choosing to play an extra psychic tech. That's how much I'm respecting uh, the importance of psychic in the meta right now. So I've even it hurts me a lot to not play four Bridgets, but I've gone down to three. It's still high high odds to get the early Bridgets alongside the Lele's and Ultra Balls. So, you know, you can get away with it. Uh, many people have. Uh, I'm just stubborn, set in my ways that I always want to play four. But I've finally conceded the fact that I need to play more Psychic Techs just for the meta right now. But yeah, three copies of Bridget, still a high count, still insane, still really important for getting multiple Zeruas, multiple Riolas down. Uh, really good. And three copies of Guzmas. I've said how great Lucario is at dealing with Lele's and Zoroarks. Unfortunately, the opponent's not just going to feed you them. Uh, you've got to uh, guzma them out a lot of the time to take those prizes. So three copies is going to be nice there. Three copies of Choice Band. Again, helps the aggressiveness of this deck. It makes Lucario just nutty. It even means that the Aura Strike is doing relevant numbers in the active position if you're not evolving that turn. So that's really good. Uh, it helps your Mewtwo out on Buzzwells. And it also helps against Parallel City. Uh, when you can't remove it with Field Blower, you still have three choice bands to hopefully do like two hits if, if you're going for a Writer's Beating play or if you're going for an Energy Drive turn, something like that. So it's all relevant. It all helps you get two hit KOs. Really good math fixer for you. One copy of Floatstone. As I mentioned, Lucario can be a little chunky if they're going to ignore him or if he just gets stuck in the active. So moving him is going to be nice. And in general, just getting the right Pokemon in the right place is going to be useful all the time. So one copy of Floatstone. Really, really good for that. Finally, just seven energy. Four of them are going to be DCEs. And three of them are going to be those lovely strong energies for buffing the Lucario. We're not playing any basic energy. Uh, you can choose to play one. Um... I was tinkering around with it, and then I realized that you can't actually copy Lucario because <laughs> you need to evolve. So that's pretty bad. I think the main two debates to playing a single basic energy, or there's a couple of debates really. You're obviously less weak to E-Hammer, so you can sort of secure an attachment. It also means you could have another means of retreating. We're only playing one Floatstone at the moment to retreat, and now you can, in theory, pay retreat with a single energy on pretty much anything in the deck. Uh, and the other debate is that... Um, What's the other debate? I can't remember. Yeah, but there was definitely another debate, but yeah. It's just an energy that stays on the board, uh, whereas strong energies don't. But I think overall, if I was only playing two strong energies, you're so much less likely to get the cool combo for dealing with Lele's. And I think that combo is important enough to try and support it as much as possible. So that's why I'm going all the way on the strong energy route. But if you're concerned about stuff like E-Hammer, um, you can go to one basic fighting, and I wouldn't really hate that at all. So that's going to be it for my list. Let's talk about some cards that you could be playing. I mentioned that um, Greninja can be a bad matchup. Um, my stats say that Greninja is barely in the top 10 of decks right now in terms of results. But if you're thinking it's going to make a comeback or if it's popular in your area, you can play the Tina promo to win you maybe a free round. That's always going to be nice. Another thing that's sort of kind of raising in popularity and something that's... Uh, something that you have to keep in mind a lot more now is going to be Mill, unfortunately. Uh, if you are going to play Oranguru, you probably need to play the basic fighting as well. I mean, you can spend DCs, but a lot of the time you're going to be using resource management to try and get back those sorts of cards. Um, but yeah, this can help you out against Sylveon. It can also help you out against the Hooper variants. But bear in mind, of course, Hooper is an attacking variant these days. Um, so you can't just get around it too easily. But Profound Knowledge does give you some sort of an attack. And you can sort of flick between Profound Knowledge and Resource Management, even using like Acer Rollers on this guy. Resource Management back in your Acer Rollers and Puzzles and stuff like that. And then go f like sort of flick between these two attacks whenever you can. Um, but I don't think it's going to be great for you. I think the Attacking Hooper deck will probably overwhelm you more often than not, even with things like Jab uh, doing like 60 and stuff. It just doesn't sound good <laughs> at all. And we're not heavily teched. I guess you could play some other Lucario if you really want to not lose to stuff like Attacking Hooper. But bear in mind, again, um, they they have like lots of different attackers. So just playing like one Lucario 
isn't going to be great for you, even though this can get one hits on Hoopers, it won't do it. Uh, actually, it will even with the Fury Belts, because you can uh, Strong Energy your way there. But yeah, I think if you really respect Hooper that much, I mean, it, it's a slot that you could spend if you really had to, but I'm not too keen on it. Another card that I really want to experiment with, but haven't had the chance to just yet, is Super Scoop Up. I saw Burt Walters had a list that he won a cup with, with three Scoop Up in his list. I've tinkered around with two. It was pretty good. It helps you move those Lucarios when they're just being ignored, which is actually a lot of the time, to be honest, if they don't have a Psychic Answer that turn. Um, so picking those up can be good. And in weird panic spots, you can pick up Lucario, then play it... Sorry, pick up a Zoroark and play it onto a different... A Zerua to get extra trades if you really need to. So Scoop Up's a pretty cool card. Uh, you can tinker around with playing a couple. Uh, maybe reduce, um, like, cut one Psychic Tech, cut a Choice Band, and then think about adding in the two Scoop Ups and go from there, really. I think that's a pretty cool option. From there, I don't think there's much else that I need to discuss. We've already talked about the basic fighting energy. I think that would really be it for my consideration cards. So let's jump into some games and see how this deck performs. I think it's pretty good. Um, there's definitely still work to be done and the meta is still yet to settle really so we'll see how we can go here looks like we are up against a psychic deck that means we probably won't be using our Lucario much in the matchup we might still use him to maybe finish off a Lele at the end of the game uh, but we do have our own psychic techs uh, plenty of them and we have the Zoroark approach that we can go for so with three field blower, we should be pretty confident against Espeon Garb, even against things like Parallels and stuff like that. So, uh, opening pretty nicely here. We have the Zerua start. We're going first, and we have a hard Bridget, which is always the best way to do it. We have prized two Zeruas, which is sad face emoji. We're going to aggressively find ourselves a Mewtwo, I think. Um, and I may even aggressively find myself a Zerua. It's kind of risky. Uh, how good's the Coco? Mm. Coco sets stuff up for the Lucario, but it doesn't set much else up. This does give us a threat on something like an Eevee, if they find it without an energy. I don't think it's that likely. I think I still do this over a Coco, though. Mm. It's close. It's so sad that we prized two Zeroes. Uh... I like threatening it. It's fine. It also gives us like free attachments if we have them later down the line. Not going to play around Parallel City because we already have two N's in hand. And if the worst case scenario happens, we can just play N. They are going to wonder tag here. Looks like they're going to follow suit with the Bridget. We have a turn to KO on the active Trubbish, which is going to be nice if, if they can't move it. They are going to go Bridget. I'm assuming, assuming it's Espeon Garb, because it did just win after all. Would make sense. Yep, Team Trubbish. And Eevee's evolving up. Do they have the Floatstone to boot? Doesn't matter too much, it would just be 10 damage, because we'll evolve out of Confusion. So they probably just chill on the bench. Yeah, they're just going to leave it. Alrighty. We also pick up another Bridget, which I may even play here. Nah, don't be silly, Joe. Trade it away. I'll probably bench this Lele, though. I don't really want to end them. Although their hand was pretty ideal. Hmm. Huh. We could deal with this Espeon right now, if we really wanted to. Well, all right then. It's very aggressive. And it's a little worrisome when you're playing against the Garbodor deck. But this is pretty sweet. And right now, I don't see a way that they can respond on us. They need to have, like, Energy, EV, Choice Band, Floatstone, Garbodor, really. They need all of those pieces. I'm also going to shove this here just for safety. I mean, we're not worried about item usage. We haven't played any, so even a field blower doesn't change anything. Uh, do I put this here? Is it best here? Probably is best here. 
Let's make sure we don't hit energy drive. And let's clear that Espion out of the way real quick. Pulling out Azuru is going to be nice for us later on when this Mew eventually does get cleared. We actually had the option to hold the choice band. Holding it was probably actually correct. Because we could, like, Kakui KO this Lele with the help of choice band. They're probably ending us anyway, to be fair. They made Sycamore hoping to uh, get Floatstone Garb. I mean, end, they still have the chance, but I've got a cat attacking my, t my keyboard. There we go. Hello, cat. We draw back into Choice Band, but we don't draw into Kukui. Oh, looks like they did get Ability Lock. Seems good. And Energy Drive, not quite enough to deal with us, but of course the Mew is turned off now. Ah, one of our three Field Blowers, very good. That's how to do it, boys. So, we're not going to get a KO with anything but Lucario this turn, so we should probably build Lucario. Um, I think we're going to trade away a puzzle real quick. Because this hand is pretty good. don't really want to end him too much, but it's our only real draw support. Trying to do another puzzle makes me a little sad. Uh, getting rid of Guzma doesn't sound amazing. So I think we're just going to... Got a cat definitely in my face. Uh, do these things. Give them some more cards, which isn't advisable. But if they had Ultra Ball and they were happy to spend it on Ability Lock, it meant they probably had stuff. Still got a cat pestering me in every turn. Don't hit. Ah, just bit me. Cat, don't bite me. That's rude. Ah, oh, missed energy, sad face emoji. Well, it does mean that we can uh, deal with this this way. And that sounds pretty cool. This cat's going all over the shop. Don't know what's going on. Nice use of the GX attack there. And it's just one Lele to go. Do they have N and um, Floatstone to boot? I mean, our hand's not that great, but ending us to two is just ugly, right? We don't really want to see that happen. Oh, they played Tramper as well. I think that's standard. Let's give you some cat cam action while well, she's in a funny mood. Let's say 10. Interesting that they promoted Lele and attached to it though, because we're only two prizes away. They are going to play their own Lele here, with the stretcher. And there's N. They still have lots of tools left. We get duds. And we're going to get hit with energy drive. Okay, this cat is starting to annoy me. <laughs> oh, cat. Come on. Work with me here, cat. We're just going for a righteous beating. That's all we can do. She's gone away. I've upset her. Is that not known for playing Acerola? They do play parallel to maybe like retreat and parallel it away. They're gonna have to go the old fashion route to find an espion, because of course ability locks a thing. Another floatstone being played. And there's another N. Definitely a better hand for us. And 
And they're going to go for Confusion Hype. Pretty sure getting another Riolu is more right than anything else here. Gonna hold the energy because of Guzma outs. Six, nine, twelve, twelve down to uh, one hundred. So there's no reason to not flip this coin, I don't think. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 11, 12, 13, yeah, there's no reason to not flip this coin. It shouldn't be relevant damage either way. Hopefully they don't hit a parallel off this Cynthia. It's definitely going to limit our outs. They do hit a Psych Energy. They're going into Garb, and they're gonna go for a Palpad as well. Grabbing more ends. And they're gonna hit us with Trash. 80. Single Puzzle, huh? Sounds good. Not when that's the hand. So they're hitting 80. How many choice bands do they have left? They still have a lot of choice bands to go. Um, if we flip and tails, they can one hit without a choice band. They have a four card hand. They didn't use a choice band last turn. And they used a power pad. How many draw supporters do they have left? They have to have a supporter in hand. They have so many supporters left. Um, which means... I still flip this coin and try and take a prize. Okay. Nice. <laughs> ah, all these single puzzles, this game. Feels bad. End back down to one. They did it this way? Why'd they do it this way around? They could clear off their Lele. I guess we need a two card combo, but... So they just psychic the active, I guess. <clears throat> oh no. They're gonna set up Lucario. They could always one hit Lucario if they ever go for a Guzma play. But sure. We'd be in a much worse spot if they just KO'd the, Luka the uh, Zoroark. They're trying to put us in range of a uh, Confusion KO. Man. No Cynthia's. No Blowers.
So we gotta get out of here. Oh boy. We are officially in trouble now. Big Cynthia, let's go. Oh my god. That sucks. It's not a snap Guzma, which is good. Trash alarm still puts us in a really bad, okay. They, they confuse us. Danger. Oh my god. So sad face emoji right now. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Stop it with the single puzzles. How many ends has he played now? He's played like ten ends against us. Uh, dodge Guzma for another turn. <laughs> I think we're dead here. Pretty sure at this point. This has been painful. Toying with us. Toying with his prey. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. Okay, just confusion again. Okay, we get to play the game. Come on, field blower. Oh my god, that is just ridiculous. <laughs> Was a worse hand even possible there? My goodness. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well. He must have Guzma now, surely. Yeah, there it is. Ah, oh, that sucked. That really sucked. 
Mm. We went too aggressive and got end out of the game. We should have let him in the game a little more. We gave him that game, really. The Mew player was just too tempting to pass up. We could have played a lot slower, progressively. Eaten through a few trubbishes. Because the S1's not actually a big threat. We saw how long it just stayed active doing nothing. We should have just ignored that for longer. We made an error. Shouldn't be losing that matchup with three field blowers. Only saw one though, to be fair to us. I think we played those puzzles wrong as well. There was obviously the time where I traded into another puzzle straight afterwards, which is just dumb. I don't think it was wrong at the time, but... They're playing a Zoroark deck. And with that knowledge, we'll bench a Rioli. Ah, a mirror. We are playing two psychic checks for mirror. That's going to be important, hopefully. One of the mute, like the mute is pretty bad though. Unless they attach to this active Rioli turn one. <laughs> Getting rid of a Mallow and an Ultra Ball. Their hand is fire. Their hand is absolute flames. Lele for Bridget, the standard stuff. That's a lot more Riolus than it is Zerua's. We have the Mew. We can even just do it like this, because we have Coco, so we can Ultra Ball out a Mew if he wants to like deal with our only Riolu with like his Lucario Guzma play. Um, let's think this through. If he goes Guzma with a Zoroark though, that's when we're actually sad. Uh, but I am sad if he Guzman's our only Zerua, or one of our two Zeruas. I like drawing cards. Let's keep to that mentality. Happy days. We know that hand is good, that's the only reason I'm second guessing it. We know that hand's nuts because of their discards. Here we go, here come the lads. See, they traded away a puzzle. Their hand is insane. Madness. Okay. This is the thing that we were most afraid of, I guess. Huh? Wait, what? There's just no way. Oh, uh, huh? <laughs> um, guys, can you help me out here? What's just happened? 
before our very eyes. I think drawing more cards first is still the policy. So we only have two strong. That'll be the thing that we need to dig for. Look at all of these juicy Lucarios for his army of Riolus. I'm going to be so upset when this play pays off for him. We do have the Mew follow up though. Ooh, do puzzles change anything? Puzzles gets alterable, but alterable doesn't get us a KO because we only have DC in hand. Ugh. So we just hold the lot, hold the team, hold fire for a bit. Could have gone for a detect play because we are holding the puzzles to maybe recycle with Mew, but I don't think it's that worth it. Don't think it's that worth it. They hit DCU now. There's another Zerua. Gonna get a cheeky trade in. Don't do those things. Okay. So we're probably going Lele here as long as we can hit one of our choice bands. We're playing three blower, I'm okay to get rid of one. Kui also makes us want to do this line. Basically 80 is a bad number, but 100 is not a bad number. It sets up the schemes. Choice band to boot, I think I hold though. Like I said, 100's fine. The one Riolu hitting the board again. They're going to go for trade. Got rid of an Ace of Roller, so they have a second Ace of Roller in hand. Or they'd rather go for like a Guzma this turn. That's what they're telling us. Yep, second Ace of Roller. Is it just into, yeah, okay. Reset the turn, why not? Well, the main reason why not is because we can go Lucario next turn. That's why not, but don't tell him that. There's the DCE. There's the beats. We top deck a trading card. That's nice. Do I ever Mallow to get a parallel at this point? I can Mallow to get a puzzle as well. Puzzle can get us... Oh, no, we don't want a puzzle to get a Serena because we've, <laughs> we're using a Mallow to do it. Uh, let's get rid of one of our choice bands. That opens up the doors for me to do all the things I want to do in life. So we grab Acerola, and I think we just grab Guzma. 
We could also grab Stretcher. I think it's just Goose. Pretty nice turn here. Smacking his only Zoroark currently in play. Parallel was also prized. <laughs> I've not been paying attention today. I'm stressing out because I've only got like five minutes before I gotta go. <clears throat> it's fine. We'll finish him off in time. Plenty of time. Cynthia, Cynthia away a big hand. Scoop up. They're going to give us Cantankerous. <clears throat> They're going to Lele again. Well, let's get this trade in. Those cards are all that good. <clears throat> so we actually do need to cantankerous. Let's do this to defend ourselves from it. <clears throat> it does mean you can remove his Lele. <coughs> but I don't mind it. I think he's going to need Zorok at some point to win this game. We're baiting him to basically use a Lucari next turn, then we can just mew him down. We don't need like any of these cards. I guess they're still trading cards. Let's do this old thing. Hmm. <clears throat> Yep, here comes Lucario response. Currently 140. They can't even deal with him. They just can't handle him. They just can't handle this lad. Um, it'd be pretty embarrassing if I decked out because we have our other Acer Rider in the prizes. I've not checked. We'll just see. Well, it's not in these two cards. Our prizes theoretically could be our last puzzle and our second Acerola. That's what they could be. Um, I have no way of checking. I can't Mallow to check. I can't single puzzle to check if... I guess I could Ultra Ball to check. Okay, we can check. <clears throat> Let's have a little look, because I've been bad at this game. Okay, cool.
yay for psychic text. Nice, nice win. And that's actually all I have time for. I literally need to go like right now. <laughs> okay, only a couple of games. One long one against Espion Garb that I pretty much shafted myself in. And that one went a lot better. I think the moral of the story is I had more Zoroax so I could draw more cards and win the game more. Even though you see a mirror match, you still want to get the dark stuff out first. That's still best. So that'll be it for today, guys. And uh, I'll see you in another video soon. Cheers.